and I do that by going to a special place and uh, today I'm going to take you to a very special place Hey up and welcome back or indeed welcome for the first time if it is your first time So, mixed feelings today, but um, you know, I'm lucky enough to have three bikes to choose from. I got a Honda ST1300 Pan European, I have a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650, and this little beauty, my Royal Enfield Classic 350. When it comes to deciding upon which bike to take on a run out, I think it uh, often depends uh, what mood I'm in basically. But I think if you want to engage in the landscape, collect and focus your thoughts, try and reason to the world and its madness, get back to basics and get back to what's truly real you want to ride a bike that has the minimum of distractions and uh, both my uh, my pan and my uh, interceptor both have enough uh, power and shove and uh, capability but the temptation is always to indulge in the bike and the ride beyond the broader context of your thoughts and the landscape that you're riding through but not with this classic 350 it's sufficiently modest and tame but with a great big heart and a great big personality to far from distract you from those elemental things but to carry you through them with uh, grace so uh, this bike it is for today and uh, really what I want to do is um, I want to reflect upon past and present not the first time for me on one of these ride outs I know but the worse and worse things get in the world and we're all becoming increasingly tuned into that aren't we the worse and worse it gets with the world the more comfort I find in reflecting on years gone by reflecting on better times more honest times more down to earth decent times and uh, if you want to call that some form of the catharsis some form of uh, therapy for the mind then uh, there's no bike better than this to do that on in my humble opinion and yeah so I don't watch the mainstream media anymore because the proliferation of naked bias is uh, it's more than I can tolerate whether it's the BBC or Sky or ITV any of them they are frankly no more than organs of the state and a state which is becoming incre increasingly unreasonable and controlling and 
cynical particularly with respect to the regard which it has for its own citizens the likes of you and me and I've spent years now trying to work out what it's all about and why things are panning out this way and what the motivations are I think I know what the motivations are I think probably t take us take us back a hundred years or more to a time when the polarization of certainly the English class system was there for all to see and for all at the top to enjoy and for all near the bottom to suffer and uh, you know after after World War two and into the 50s 60s and 70s we were we were really clawing our way out of those dark years of history into a better world and now would you believe seems we are regressing some of you watching this, I know, will probably remember a programme, a TV programme, back in the 1960s, black and white, called That Was The Week That Was. And it was like a current affairs satirical programme. Had a lot of big names on it, but there's a famous sketch from that was the week that was and some of you might remember it it featured John Cleese Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett and this before of course Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett became uh, famous as the two Ronnies and God rest both their uh, beautiful souls I have to say uh, John Cleese still with us of course but in that sketch, the three of them were lined up, and of course on the right hand side you've got John Cleese, all six foot, what, six, seven of him, uh, dressed up as a city gent, uh, with his, uh, his morning suit and his cane and his derby hat. And in the middle you've got Ronnie Barker, dressed in fairly regular middle-class clothing of the day and then uh, on the left hand side you've got little Ronnie Barker oh what five foot of him <laughs> and he's dressed in proper uh, cloth cap and uh, typical working class attire And of course it's a satirical sketch about the class system. And uh, as I remember it, John Cleese in his City Gents outfit, towering above the other two, turns to face Ronnie Barker and says, uh, I'm upper class, but he's middle class looking at Ronnie Barker. So I looked down upon him, and uh, <laughs> and then camera goes to Ronnie Barker, and Ronnie Barker looks uh, looks up at John Cleese and says, "I'm middle class." So I look up to him, John Cleese, and then he he, he turns to his right and says, "But I look down on him, working class," to Ronnie Corbett. And then the camera focuses on Ronnie Corbett and Ronnie Corbett just says, I know my place. <laughs> it's quite a famous sketch. But it absolutely speaks volumes and it's as valid now as it was then. This is what the establishment, the powers that be, 
both in government, in large corporations and in uh, non-elected bodies across the globe that's exactly where they want us to be back knowing our place and it makes me weep I mean it's not even if any of these people are trying to camouflage what they're doing the corruption is blatant so they obviously feel no need whatsoever to conceal it shameless and it's a horrible feeling and uh, sometimes you've just got to get away from it and the only way that you can get away from it or the only way that I can get away from it before it destroys me completely is just to go to a special place and take stock and reflect and remember better times and dare to hope and dream somebody once famously said I can't remember who it is now for evil to succeed all that is required is that good men do nothing and that is so true but you've got to get your head straight first and I do that by going to a special place and uh, today I'm going to take you to a very special place and I know these places because back um, before he got conscripted into World War II my dad he used to cycle and motorcycle all around his beloved Yorkshire Dales my beloved Yorkshire Dales our birthright and uh, as a child he used to tell me about all these special places that he'd been and show me photographs and of all of those there's one place that sticks in my mind more than any other and it's never featured on this channel before and uh, it's a place steeped in legend and it's a very spiritual place and in many ways it's quite an intimidating place but it's also very very beautiful but yeah it's steeped in legend and uh, some people say indeed it's even haunted so I'm just going to go there I'm going to collect my thoughts and I'm going to try and put things into some sort of perspective and hopefully you can share with me also just what a beautiful place it is so of course I'm, uh, I'm on my way now to uh, my starting point and uh, there I'll, uh, I'll talk to you again and I'll tell you where this place is and why it's so important and, and of course I'm going to Pateley Bridge aren't I because that is the motorcyclist operational hub when it comes to Yorkshire Dales travel well it is for me so I'll, uh, I'll speak to you again when I get there see you in a bit so here we are high above uh, Pateley Bridge out on the moors here and this place I'm going to take you to is a very very spiritual place for me it uh, it has an uncanny habit of getting right under your skin and uh, if a place can at once be foreboding and beautiful it is but uh, there's a 
strange sort of uh, magic about the place something uh, otherworldly going on there I sometimes get the distinct impression I've been there in a former life but I'm not really into that sort of thing but uh, it's got that feeling about it and whether it is because of the uh, acoustics there or the nature of the light but you just feel as if you are in some kind of oasis which almost exists in a different dimension to the uh, to the landscape in which it's situated so enough of that preamble we are going to Semmer Water uh, Semmer Water of course uh, the famous painting of it by uh, J.M. Turner uh, which uh, which I think really captures the mood of the place but anyway, so the route we're going to take to Semmer Water in Wensleydale will be from here to Kirby Malzard, then to Massam, then to Middleham, and from uh, Middleham and then West Witton and uh, then to Aysgarth and just beyond Aysgarth is the turn off to Semmerwater so join me on the journey Kirby Malzard and Massum and East Witten Middleham of Racehorse fame as you can probably gather Middleham has a thoroughbred Racehorse Training Centre That one's lively And West Witten And uh, just seeing Semmer Water there on, on the way down this uh, very tight, narrow, winding, steep approach just starts to uh, stir those familiar feelings. So, this is Semmer Water. This is the place to come you want to get away from the nonsense of everyday life and it's a really really special place very very hard to put into words and there's an old legend around uh, Semmer Water it basically says that one day in the dim and distant past that uh, a beggar came to these parts and was seeking refuge for the night and he knocked on uh, quite a few doors, doors of the landed gentry that lived around these parts seeking shelter and got turned away at every door no dirty beggars round here and then uh, eventually he came to a shepherd's house and uh, sure as sure the old shepherd and his wife put him up for the night and the following morning according to the legend he uh, 
left the house and when he got to the outskirts of Semawater, he said the words, Semawater rise, Semawater sink, drown all but this house where they gave me food and drink. And at that, the waters rose and it is said engulfed the entire residential area. And my dad used to say, that if you come here on a quiet day, sometimes you can hear the bells of a sunken church. And if ever you're in and around the Yorkshire Dales and you just want to come to somewhere a little bit different, I mean, there are plenty of bodies of water in and around Yorkshire, reservoirs, natural features, rivers, but there's nowhere quite like this place. And whether it's because of the, the nature of the light, and maybe that's why Turner painted this, uh, this scene, or whether it's the, the acoustics, because there's just something about the sound here, particularly on a quiet day, nestled between uh, all of these hills. There's, there's something about the sound that's just a little bit otherworldly. It's good for the soul. Now, I was here, um, here some years ago. Um, I think it was the winter of 2008. And uh, I came up in a 4x4, came down here. And uh, all of this was frozen, frozen solid with the sun going down that time of year and uh, with the lake completely frozen over, it really just did add to that uh, otherworldly atmosphere. It really is an amazing place. You sort of suspend reality when you come here. Well, certainly I do and that's why it's so therapeutic. I don't know if you've ever you've seen a film. There was a film in 1976 by uh, the acclaimed Australian filmmaker, Peter Weir. It was a film based on a book. And the title was Picnic at Hanging Rock. And uh, it was centered around uh, an area in Australia, but one that was reputed Hanging Rock to harbour strange and special powers and just to be a little uh, set aside from, uh, from the rest of the world. It's a story basically about a group of Victorian schoolgirls that uh, went on a trip there and, uh, and never came back. But there are lines spoken at the beginning of that film by, uh, by the key character called Miranda. And she said, what we see and what we see are but a dream, a dream within a dream. And that's what this place does to you. It makes you feel as if you're dreaming within a dream. It's a truly amazing place for reasons that I couldn't begin to properly articulate. Yeah, I said at the beginning of this video that this is the place to come if you just want to set your mind straight, try and work things out in your own quiet way, and just accept the reality and the beauty of a place like Semawater. It's the closest thing that you're going to get, I suppose, to a a legal hallucinogenic. It sort of purges out of you all the peripheral, complicated, but largely irrelevant thoughts that you have in life. And if you're gonna do it on a motorcycle, do it on a classic 350 or something similar. Don't come tearing round here on a sports bike or a or the ubiquitous adventure bike. Get into the spirit of it. Come on a modern classic. 
You know, when, uh, when I've talked in past videos about the way the world's going and all the restrictions and the controls that people are trying to impose upon us, and the fact that the only real escape we've got from that day-to-day -day torture is the ability to come to somewhere like this when we want, how we want. And that these people should on the one hand seek to make our lives such a misery and then with the other deny us the one antidote to that misery which is a place like this. Because there are no trains here, they're in a train station for endless miles. There's no bus route. And unless you're very, very fit, you're not going to be walking here, hiking here or cycling here. So the only realistic prospect is your own private transport. And that's a frightening thought that ordinary working people might be denied this someday. And that has to be resisted at every turn. It's too precious. And people sometimes ask, well, why would they do this? Ultimately, why would they do this when there was much to lose as anybody else? And I'm always reminded when that question is asked of the fable of the fox and the scorpion. I don't know if you've heard it, but basically there's a fox and a scorpion that need to cross a river or maybe a body of water like this, semi water. But the scorpion can't swim, so the scorpion says to the fox, can I uh, ride across on your back? And the fox says, well, no, because you'll sting me and I'll die. And the scorpion says, don't be stupid. If I sting you halfway across this water, we'll both die, we'll drown. So the fox thinks about this, applies an element of logic to it and says, yeah, okay. So the scorpion jumps on the fox's back and sure enough, they start to swim across the river. And halfway across, the scorpion stings the fox. And in its death throes, the fox says, why did you do that? We're both going to die now. And the scorpion said, it's in my nature. But just as in the tale of the fox and the scorpion, we can uh, find a rationale for why people do the most stupid ridiculous, pointless, illogical things. We can actually look at our own position, can't we? And I'm, uh, I'm reminded of a, a quote from The Merchant of Venice by Shakespeare, which goes, prickers do we not bleed, ticklers do we not laugh, poisoners will we not die, and wrong us, will we not revenge? Yeah, so this is Semmerwater. What a beautiful place. And what better bike to come on than this beautiful Royal Enfield Classic 350. It really, really does get you into a, a warm and fuzzy feeling of the past. And we can all dream, can't we? Nobody can take dreams away from us. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of a flirtation with legend and Shakespearean quotes and old fables. They all seem to have the relevance and the place in a place like this. But this is where you come to get away from the nonsense. This is where you come to replenish your soul. And this is where you come to be introspective and to try and uh, sort your mind out, bring some peace, level things out, come to Semmer Water, you won't regret it, it's awesome. So my beloved Semmer Water, until the next time we meet, all we ask of you 
is to be here for us anytime we need you. And if anybody thinks for one moment that they're going to deny us the simple pleasures in life, think again. Okay, so that's it from Semmer Water in Wensleydale, in the beautiful Yorkshire Dales. My home, and uh, one which I hope you'll visit before too long, if you haven't already. From Semmer Water, in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales, thank you for coming along, thank you for listening to my, uh, <laughs> oh bless, no I'm not going to do you any harm, don't worry, where was I, oh yes, that's it from, uh, from the uh, beautiful, beautiful summer water in the heart of Wensleydale in the Yorkshire Dales. If you've watched this far, thank you for doing so. Please click a like, please click a subscribe. Until the next time, ride safe, be kind. And before I miss my turn off, I'll catch you on the next one. Doodle Pip. Semmer water rise, semmer water sink, drown all but this house where they gave me food and drink.